The um, line is you t- you steal the headline, not the story, because basically b- the reality is the bulk of the stories are pretty uninteresting dramatically if you actually just took the story. The bulk of police stories that you read about, they know who did it, they arrest the guy, they put him, take him to trial, and he goes to prison. End of story. That's not really what we do. The, ideally, the first half of the show is a murder mystery and the second half is a moral mystery. That means that, yes, did we do the, second, you know, the, the Central Park jogger? We did a headline where a jogger was assaulted. The story that surrounded it was completely different than the actual event. And the shows that are the most disappointing to me, in a sense, are the ones where people go, oh, it's uh, pick something, the Carnegie Deli shooting, and all it is is basically an an hour non-documentary documentary about that crime. The interesting thing is... um, taking people's expectations from an historical event or an event of recent history that's torn from the headlines and showing them something that they had never thought about in the context of that crime or what that crime really means. For example, the first episode of next season is a Jewish antique Antiquities antique dealer is found dead in his store on Madison Avenue. Head wound. It turns out that he is a dealer in Middle Eastern antiquities. It turns out that he was married by, or married, he was murdered by an Iraqi who has been importing uh, objects from the Baghdad Museum illegally and selling them, and they got into an argument, and this guy died. So you have what is immediately a rather sympathetic character in New York, which is an Israeli-born American Jewish antiques dealer killed by an Iraqi who probably will look remarkably like Saddam Hussein since they all seem to. And in actual fact, what will devolve from this is that, yes, the Iraqi was in the room when the guy had a heart attack, got up, because he was so angry with him, went after him, fell down, hit his head on an object on the desk, which makes him look like he had been murdered, but he hadn't been murdered. So now all they can get this guy for is stolen property or grand theft or something, and it turns out that his defense is these are completely worthless. You saw what happened this week, that Saddam Hussein has been making copies of everything in the Baghdad Museum and selling the originals off. So that turns into a discussion of if experts have been walking through the Baghdad Museum for 15 minutes thinking these are are real antiquities, what difference does it make if they were made five years ago? People are looking at them as the real thing. What is the value of art? What is the value of anything that can be duplicated? Why are you willing to pay $15 million for Monet when there's somebody who can copy that picture so exactly that you would have to run chemical analysis on it to find out whether it was painted in 1890 or in 1990. That's, to me, much more fascinating than a story about an Iraqi uh, killing a Jew in New York. But the headline is something that hopefully is going to capture an audience. Oh, my God, how are they doing that? so quickly to the, you know, so within a short period of time from the actual event taking place. That's where the show, that's what makes Law & Order such a unique animal and so satisfying to work on.